Test mic. Sounds good. Sounds good to me. Just making, making sure the audio was on. I didn't, everyone's so quiet. <laughs> trained. Well trained after 10 years. <laughs> I want to see Tim Bell's face. I see your name there. Where's your, where's your, yes, Tim. It's You're so on mute. Than it used to be. Oh my gosh, that back <laughs> on the <was> perfect. <laughs> Make the magic. <laughs> what time is it there for you, Tim Bell? Um, five. Five. Yeah. I think Tom's the latest. That's not too bad. It's 11 p.m. Okay. Here's Tom oh, Fifield. I hope you have bad. a. Do, do you have a beverage in you yet? Yeah, yeah. I came to that <laughs> a little bit earlier. I'm on the water at the moment. <laughs> it's a bit way too early to enjoy a beverage in California. Yeah. yeah, I'm making my first cup of tea because I was up very late last night and then now it's early. <laughs> well, I mean, you can just put whiskey or rum into your coffee or tea, whichever I you mean, prefer. <laughs> I'm not saying that's not possible. I'm just saying I probably won't work at all today if it happens. <laughs> that's what you think, Olika. I can concur with uh, Kendall. It, yeah, it's it's almost Friday somewhere. If I didn't have another like three hours of meetings after this, I think I'd be much more like in on that plan. With that plan, the meetings would be much more fun. You do have a good point. Aliko, you'd be a good pusher. I'll only I'll do a fireball if I'm not alone. I'm glad <laughs> to see that uh, Tim Bell brought Guillaume. I was meaning to uh, encourage him to come, but we've got Tim. Tim has brought him as his plus one, so that's good. <laughs> He's always on my shoulder. It's it's a spirit thing. <laughs> He's your spirit animal? Yeah. Well, it looks like we've got a bunch of people joining. Sharon is on. I think uh, we might get started here in a minute. <laughs> it's awesome to see all of the, I'm just you know clicking through and seeing everybody who's joining on video, all these faces that we don't get to see in person anymore. <laughs> Chris Hodge would like someone to tell him what OpenStack is. <laughs> you think we figured that out? So give us another decade, man. Yeah. 10 years then. I, I told Jonathan last night, I was looking at old photos from our first trip to Japan. And there's some slides in the background. I'm like, this is actually Still probably one of the best descriptions of OpenStack. It's pretty uh, straightforward, but maybe we should bring it back out. All right, well, I think uh, we should get it started. We, um, 
we've got a lot of um, a lot of content from uh, different community members who have joined us that uh, that that agreed to kind of step up and uh, and share some some memories and some history and their uh, their journey with OpenStack and I think that's going to be um, really exciting to hear from from all of them. Uh, you, you know, Mark and I are uh, are are kind of emceeing through it, but uh, really, I think this is this is ultimately about celebrating what um, what this incredible community has done in the last ten years. And uh, and you know, I think that that uh, like Mark said, we've been looking through photos, and as we've gone through them, it's it's just amazing to see how many people we've met from all over the world who have who have jumped into this community and and uh, participated and contributed in so many different ways and that's really you know what uh, what I think today is about really just celebrating that and and uh, giving people an opportunity to um, to kind of look back and also look forward and and um, you know appreciate everything that uh, that we've done so um, I guess Mark, you know, you you mentioned that that you can't have a have an OpenStack presentation without some hype slides. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it wouldn't be OpenStack with a bunch of a lot of lot, big numbers and fancy slides. So we were going to start with the latest stats and things, especially for for those of you who haven't uh, been involved lately. Maybe um, amazed just to see the things that you started, how they've grown, um, and you know. It's it's kind of crazy. We have a hundred thousand people in the community now around the world and almost two hundred countries. So it's one of the one of the things that is the most awesome, I think, just how many people have been able to get involved. And so thank you to everybody who who got involved early and helped kick this off. I think, you know, we've now got just people all over the world that are participating. We just had one of our first virtual events and uh and actually had people from 70 plus countries join. So it's awesome just to see the ideas from around the world and not, not be anchored in any one place. It's kind of uh, all over. Um, but anyway, I'm glad a lot of you could, could join. And uh, I'm not sure what our next slide is, but let's find out. <laughs> Did you start drinking already? <laughs> no, that might be the problem. Um, I want to apologize up front for not drinking before this. Um, but yeah, I think <laughs> obviously we've had just people all over the world join the community since, since all of you helped start it um, back 10 years ago. And what you also might not know is a lot of the, the code that you wrote and the ideas that you all contributed 10 years ago are now um, really making an impact all over the world. I mean, we have that software is now powering um, the biggest postal service in the world. I mean, I don't know about y'all, Josh and, and everybody, but I never thought the postal service anywhere would run OpenStack or even telecoms. We have, there are a billion people connected to China Mobile, which is just one telecom running OpenStack. And so it's kind of crazy all the places it's gone. And it's one of the awesome things about open source. So just hope everybody's really proud of what you all started because it's it's running all over the freaking world now. <laughs> I think it's the largest power company in the world runs it, the largest payment processor. I could go on, but uh, I haven't been drinking, so I'll probably not go on. But suffice it to say that uh, you all built something really awesome. And of course, you know, I can't say often enough that CERN runs it. So hat tip to Tim Bell and, you know, the fact that we're we're all trying to find that missing 95% of mass or matter or whatever it is. I need to get a physics degree, but anyway, it's running everywhere. It's running everything. So it's pretty, pretty awesome to see what, what you all started, how, how it's gone places. What's next? Sunny was going to give us some stats on the OpenStack project, the current oh, stats. Cool. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Mark and Jonathan. Um, so hi, everyone. My name is Sunny. I'm the marketing associate in the foundation. So um, just like uh, Mark mentioned, not only we're having, we have more than 10 million OpenStack compute cores around the world, we will begin as an endeavor to bring greater choice in cloud solutions to users. 
OpenStack has also evolved into one of the three most active open source projects in the world, um, supported by a global community of over 100,000 individuals. Um, OpenStack is also the most um, widely deployed open source cloud infrastructure software. And according to 451 research, OpenStack is projected to be a $7.7 .7 billion um, market by 2023, with the most growth in Asia, Latin America, Europe, and North America. So with uh, millions of cores, mm -hmm. over 100,000 community members, and 10 years with our community, the OpenStack project has accomplished many big milestones, such as 21 releases with more than 500k changes merged and 8,000 developers authoring those changes. So thank you to all the community members who have worked together and collaborate without boundaries. We absolutely couldn't have done it without you. So this is why we're celebrating today. And uh, here I would also like to encourage you to check our 10 years OpenStack blog on um, openstack.org slash blog. Um, we have gathered the content from community members all around the world on what 10 years OpenStack mean to them, but also our ecosystem companies on how 10 years with OpenStack have transformed their um, companies as well. I will get back to you, Martin Jonathan. Cool. Yeah, it is, it is uh, you know, Sometimes I think as you like watch it grow year by year, you 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 can lose track of of uh, where we started and and digging back through old decks. Like like Mark said, uh, it's funny to see when when we were um, you know celebrating having having uh, like a hundred developers <laughs> and then you know two hundred developers and and now we uh, we have so many developers every release that that still kind of are joining and contributing and moving it forward, but. Um, now we're going to get into the uh, some of the fun parts here, where we get to hear from, um, from from a variety of people who have put their mark on OpenStack and uh, and tell us um, how they uh, how they got involved and, and some of their favorite memories. And first up, we have Brett Pyatt, who I see is sporting um, one of the original <laughs> OpenStack T-shirts. There, yeah. take it away, Brett. Jonathan? Yeah, so I'll, I'll take a, a little bit of uh, artistic liberty with the uh, timelines. I may have been <laughs> drinking during some of this, so my memories may not be exactly factually correct. But I'm starting at the beginning uh, in a conference room inside a remodeled shopping mall uh, turned Rackspace corporate headquarters, uh, where we had a light up moose and a <laughs> canoe on the walls. Uh, this, uh, our belief um, at that we were discussing there was that Linux was critically important to the rise of open source as a server operating system and really powering the web. And we believed that you needed an open source data center operating system to become that critically important project for cloud computing. So countless hours were spent. And after we finished crafting uh, the first draft of our master plan, we hopped on a flight to Seattle. So even from the very beginning, the OpenStack community focused on being inclusive and asking to learn uh, from others with the goals to build something special. Our trip to Seattle included a visit to the OpsCode headquarters, uh, the company behind Chef where we had a long discussion with Adam Jacob about open source governance and community building. Yes, those really were light switches inside their office. And yes, some of you in the audience may disagree with me uh, on the order and chaos one, and you may prefer to work in the dark. That's a debate for another day. I'd like to thank Adam uh, and the team we met with for lots of great lessons learned. With the new knowledge in hand, we returned to San Antonio. So after figuring out the direction where we were headed on governance and licensing, we needed to learn about running events. So then off to San Francisco and DrupalCon. Dries was gracious enough to sit down with us for breakfast and hear our ideas. He's an amazing person and shared very valuable advice. It would be many years before OpenStack had an event with a keynote stage of that size. Amazingly, as a community, we did get there. And now uh, that we've learned to run our own summit uh, from Dries and the team, it was back to San Antonio to host the November 2010 OpenStack Design Summit, our first public event. We were hosting that first summit in the same building where Rackspace's first data center was built. As Rackspace no longer operated a DC in that building, we didn't have cabinets full of servers for an on-site cloud. Dell stepped up and then the shipping went awry. At 2 p.m. the day before we start the summit, I get a call that the gear went north on I-35 to Waco instead of south to San Antonio. The shipping company says, no problem. I've got a person that can get it from Waco down to you tonight. They didn't mention that it wouldn't be able to pull up to a loading dock 
and that effectively it would arrive in a horse trailer. Thanks to the community support for members who stayed through the night, we were able to get everything connected. Then, after a sighting, an exciting three days, it was time for me to hop on another flight. And another flight, and another flight, and another flight. For a few couple of years, I personally avoided hotel reward programs and frequent flyer programs because I didn't want to know how many stays, legs, or miles I racked up, and I certainly didn't want a vacation by going on another flight to another hotel. I would travel anywhere to share the OpenStack message, but in my off hours, I enjoyed some quiet time at home. You really should After have warned me United about that, Brett. <laughs> I didn't uh, learn at all from that. Yes. After touring the United States and spreading the word, it was time to hop on a long flight across the Pacific. The top left photo uh, is of, of Mark and I uh, in Tokyo. Uh, and then down the bottom right, um, I believe Mark took the photo of me in Beijing uh, in front of the Forbidden City. While it was still early, we were spreading the word of OpenStack globally, and we believed it was necessary to do that even from the beginning. Today, I'm still running an OpenStack comp uh, company that connects tens of thousands of businesses um, and protects their storage and data. Uh, check out my super user interview with Mark on the OpenStack site to hear more about that. And uh, I'd like to thank the foundation team, the members of the community, the developers, the operators, and the users. What an amazing first decade. Um, and I think we'll all be celebrating the 20th before we know it. So thanks for letting me share the story today with everybody. Thanks, Brett. Uh, the horse trailer story. I know, I remember I've that. I've forgotten you almost all those stories, so thank you. <laughs> uh, probably uh, intentionally, right, Mark? <laughs> out the, the scary somehow, one. somehow. So uh, next up, we, uh, we've got Dustin Kirkland to, uh, to share. So um, take it away, Dustin. Hey, hey, how are you guys? Good to hear from everyone. Um, yeah, the, my intro to OpenStack was actually from vacation. I was on vacation with my wife uh, on holiday in July 2010, so just uh, pretty much exactly 10 years ago. Um, I was working at Canonical as an engineer. Um, I was packaging. I was the packager for KVM, Libbert. Uh, and at the time, Ubuntu was working with Eucalyptus as a, as a cloud platform. And we had pretty much hit our limits with what, what we could do with Eucalyptus. Uh, and while on holiday, I heard something about NASA and Rackspace putting together a group to explore this idea of uh, uh, another uh, open source cloud platform uh, to challenge VMware uh, and AWS. Uh, and so I... Um, at the dismay of, of my darling bride, I actually left uh, vacation to fly back home to Austin, uh, live in Austin, uh, where, we, um, where we actually held the very first uh, OpenStack uh, Summit. So on the next slide, you can see the, uh, the couple of pictures that I took from my phone. This was before a day where you, know, you take every, pictures of everything with a phone. Uh, that's breakfast at the Omni Hotel um, in Austin. And the entire OpenStack Summit was, uh, what, 50 people, I guess, fit into a single 75. Conference. 75 people. <laughs> uh, there was this uh, circular or, or square-shaped um, uh, table, and everyone sat around this table, and we were taking notes uh, in a shared document up on a projector screen. Uh, after two days of that, I think we walked away with uh, the foundations of what would eventually become uh, OpenStack. So it's amazing that that was 10 years ago. Um, on the next slide, I was asked to share my favorite OpenStack uh, summit memory. This would have been Paris in 2014. Uh, we, um, uh, we unveiled this machine, this box called the Ubuntu Orange Box, and it was basically 10 Intel Nooks that we had uh, packaged into a, a custom designed case. And it was a little portable uh, supercomputer. It was never meant to be a production thing, but it was used. We used it to 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 demonstrate the power of what uh, OpenStack would look like. It was really hard to demonstrate uh, OpenStack. People were demoing OpenStack on top of AWS at the time, or on top of Rackspace, and which is hard to conceptualize until you actually saw it. Uh, but when we put this box on the table and the the blinky lights came on and machines came up and virtual machines started running, uh, that was pretty amazing. Um, and at that time, we actually added support uh, for containers to OpenStack through LXC. Uh, and in this demo, we did a live migration of Doom, uh, the game running, from one container to another uh, on one of those physical machines to another physical machine. Uh, and it was pretty amazing. Uh, and uh, 
it's kind of a fun fact, uh, you know, maybe why this is my favorite summit memory. Uh, as I walked off the stage, my, my boss grabbed me um, and I thought he was, he, he was just really amped up and I just couldn't imagine what he was going to ask me to do because it was a, uh, it was a, a, it was a high stress time. Uh, and he shook my hand and gave me a raise right there on the spot, which was uh, pretty amazing. I, I, I'd never experienced that before in my career. <laughs> um, and then I was asked to give some advice going forward. Um, it, the, the spirit of open source, just avoid tribalism. Uh, it, just because you know, you've got a, a company that, that you're working for, uh, the power of open source is in the collaboration. Um, how dare change. you, Dustin? <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Embrace change. It's inevitable. It's coming. Uh, whether it's VMs or containers or whatever follows after that, uh, that's just part of the process. Um, it's important to expand and, and embrace new technologies, uh, but do so thoughtfully and, and purposefully. Uh, there's, a, there's, there's, a, there's a big world out there. Um, some of it belongs and some of it you know, just may not fit. Uh, and then diversity, diversity, diversity. It's so important and fundamental, and that's every walk of life you can possibly imagine. Uh, different backgrounds, different industries, different people, different uh, countries. I think a, a better project comes uh, out, of, out of diversity. Thanks, Jonathan. Um, Mark, I appreciate the, the opportunity here. Yeah, thanks for uh, for sharing. And, uh, um, you know, I, I, had, I didn't know that story behind your Paris uh, <laughs> uh, presentation that that um, I, you know I, that would be memorable. Um, <laughs> okay, so next up we have uh, a a true original stacker and uh, and also a true storyteller. Yeah. So uh, definitely I'm excited to hear uh, what Josh is going to tell us about the journey, and I'll hand it over to uh, to Mr. McKinty. Thank you so much, much John. excited slash Josh terrified. Um, I spent, you know, the, the first five years of OpenStack pretend, pretending I understood what, what was going on. And then I spent a couple of years. Can you, can you hear that? Right. Uh, there's kind of an echo. I'm trying to see if you need to okay. meet somebody. Weird. Okay. I can, I can, uh, yeah, I know that I can do much, much on my end. Here. Switch back, back to their mic and keep giving us grief, but okay. Well, I spent years pretending like I knew what was going on and, uh, and I'm done doing that now. So I have no idea what happened. Um, Sunny, can you, uh, flip slides or I'll request control if that, if that works for you. Okay. Yeah. First OpenStack was, was super, super small. Um, and you know, at NASA, we called it the, uh, oh, never mind. Okay. Um, it was, it was NASA.net. It was before it was even Nova. It was like a, we were going to build a .NET thing, and then we threw out that idea and we just we built something better. Next slide. Um, a lot of the people who were involved uh, went off and, and became very famous doing completely different things. Like Ariel Waldman uh, just gave a TED talk on on science communication, about, but she was actually on this team originally. So some of some of the people who I think had huge impacts on OpenStack were there for very brief periods of time, and there aren't even really stories about them. Uh, Jesse Kate uh, also leads Open Lunar now. So just amazing, amazing people. Uh, next slide. Um, yeah, this was the, 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 the blog post uh, that got Rackspace's attention. Um, we were not really very polished. So it was like one sentence of, hey, we should maybe try this out and see what happens. Uh, you know, the ship, ship and then test ethos was strong in, in the early days and is, is uh, still strong now. Next slide. Um, we had some gear. I also mostly just wanted to highlight some of these folks because we didn't have a lot of photos of them, but this was a Goddard Space Flight Center. Uh, this was the second uh, uh, Nova cluster. I guess maybe that makes it the third OpenStack cloud in existence. Um, did some cool stuff on that one. Uh, next slide. And this was CERN, the first time uh, CERN heard about OpenStack. Um, I gave the worst talk ever. Uh, it was cloud is like an eggplant. And uh, there was almost no one there. And the people who were there hated it. I don't know if Tim Dobb <laughs> remembers it that way. It worked. It, it worked. It, it, was, it was a mostly <laughs> empty room. I'd gone all the way 
to Europe to give this talk. And I was like, please don't do what you're about to do. There's a better thing coming. And they're like, ah, we don't know what you're talking about. We're going to write this all in C. Did you get a raise after that? Did I get what? A raise. I did not get a raise. No. No, I got fired, actually. Um, <laughs> it's usually one or the other is the yeah. way I like to play it. Yeah. Uh, next slide. Uh, then it got famous. We'll do these quick. Uh, that was the CIO of America. I came to see what was going on. Next slide. Um, we had a round table with Sergey Brin and Brewster Kale and you know all sorts of Robert Grossman. Um, they, if you see in the upper right corner, I'm standing there desperately trying not to sneeze. There were so few chairs and so many people in this room. The deputy administrator of NASA is up against the wall in the green jacket next to the center director. Didn't even get a seat at the table. <laughs> and uh, myself and Bobby Cates, who was, who was a network engineer, we were standing, there were no chairs for us, but I just really didn't want to interrupt <laughs> by sneezing and I had this terrible allergies. Next, next slide. Um, the, I, everyone has a photo of this uh, square first summit. Uh, this one is mine. Um, I spent a lot of time in this corner. I also didn't spend a lot of time sitting. I was pacing around. I did have I a chair for this one, but I just didn't sit. You were whiteboarding, I think. I was whiteboarding. That's right. We had one whiteboard. Uh, next slide. Um, and this was us quickly getting rid of a lawsuit so that we could actually release open source on the second day. <laughs> so we stayed up the night of the first day, um, submitting a patch that removed copyright. Um, it's kind of a complicated situation. Next slide. And uh, we hosted one and only one ever OpenStack event at NASA Ames. Um, I just, I think this photo of Polvi is amazing. But there were, again, there were like 12 people in a basement. Yeah, where's Alex Polvi? Huh? Let's get, him yeah. Let's get Polvi on the, on the right? Zoom. You had to go through two sets of security gates and guards to get into this basement room. So it was not a popular venue. No one remembers this event either. Next slide. Um, and then we went to Washington and this is the executive office of the president. But next slide, it's worth noting that we only had one tie amongst us in the early team. So I had worn it for the CIO's visit and then Jesse borrowed it and wore it for, for our trip to the executive office. That's incredible. The one tie of open stack. I still have that tie. Next slide. Um, and then it got really loud. Let's do these one real quick. Everyone remembers this. Uh, Piston was famous. Vaguely, for vaguely. <laughs> Next slide. Uh, the party's got really big. Uh, this one, thankfully, you can't see me. I'm in a gold spandex <laughs> unitard with a wig on. Uh, next slide. And then it got super weird. Um, the space monkey thing was actually a secret plan to make sushi out of frozen space monkey tissue um, that was stored in refrigerators at NASA Ames because we were taking over the software to manage the fridges and putting it on OpenStack. We thought maybe we had a play for this black market in space monkey sushi. Um, but the monkeys were already dead. The plan was never to kill them. Next slide. And then of course we had, you know, an epic <laughs> OpenStack focused band. Next slide. Uh, and then it went international. Let's just do these real quick. Japan, Korea, everyone went there. It was just, it, it was amazing. It is amazing. The, the international community was the part that really blew my mind. Uh, next, and then, and then sort of a sum up. <laughs> um, all sorts of stuff went wrong in everyone's life. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then it got better. And I think OpenStack was kind of the backdrop for, for everyone's 10 years. Um, and yeah, this was what, this is what I remember the most is probably the, the OpenStack babies <laughs> who are now kids and, and friends of my kids. That looks so, a little bit like that might be Jesse's and my baby there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, Congratulations, I, by the way, Jonathan. <laughs> OpenStack is Jesse and yours baby, Jonathan. That one is, that one's Lily, but yeah. Uh, and that, uh, next slide, I think that's it. Yeah. Oh, the Keystone rewrite. I just had to sl slide that in there because it was one of my favorite moments. And I just love that Jesse always coded lying down and still does. So this was coding at Jesse's house was always lying on the floor. One of my favorite moments. This was a set of people who were mostly estranged from each other for a few years. And then this was one of those parties where we had worked it out and had a really good time. Keystone light. Yeah.
Thank you. That was, uh, it's still uh, an honor. Man, those are, those that are was amazing. memories, Josh. Thank you for sharing those. It's, uh, right. I mean, you know, digging through photos and, and trips and presentations, it's, and seeing all of the, the people that have been involved, like you said, I think that's really the part that has just been, been the most meaningful for sure. And, uh, and you know, that, that's something that I think uh, has, has been unlike anything else that I've ever worked on or participated in and, and getting to meet all of these, all of these people all over the world has been awesome. So thank you for, for featuring so many that I didn't have photos of and it's great to see the, the, uh, the NASA side um, represented there. Thanks for that. And, sure. and by the way, that, that first summit was so secret, Jonathan wasn't even invited. So <laughs> he, he's oh, still agree. upset that we picked the one week that he couldn't come to throw that summit. <laughs> I, like, I think it was like the Omni, uh, you know, hotel availability. We're still, we're still living in the hotel availability. Yeah. And, world, but. and however, you know, Mark was, Mark was very nice and he, he uh, kept a shirt for me, one of the original shirts from, from that event, but it was no. like, like a, like a, a triple X <laughs> shirt, which is a little big for me. So I'm wearing, I, I'm wearing my, um, actually one of the piston customers made this shirt in honor of our error message. <laughs> and I was like, it takes a special level of love for a community to like, this was when, yeah, it's the piston dev, uh, error status pause, but, uh, <laughs> limited edition. That's great. I don't, I don't know if Nate's on, but I know he, he, he told me earlier he was wearing his dev stack shirt. So and I, I, I put this one on in honor of you, Josh, you and I, I think coined this term yes. at star bar in Austin during the first yes. summit, which was free as in beer, speech and love. And then of course, Todd Mori turned it into an amazing shirt. So thank you. So it's such a good shirt. That memory. What's my next? daughter stole that one from me. I don't have it anymore. Oh, well, maybe we can get you one. <laughs> All right. Sorry. I think we're, we're, we're stealing Nikki's time, but yeah, so, that was awesome, Josh. Thank you. Sure. Uh, yeah. Next up, we've got um, Nikki Acosta. So uh, we'll uh, hand it off to her and let her share her slides. Thanks, y'all. So I'm, I'm Nikki. Can you guys hear me? Yes. 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 So I, uh, I, um, I just learned of, of Kyle's passing, um, and now it makes sense why he never returned my phone calls. Uh, so um, props to Kyle McDonald. He was a really good friend. I stayed with him out in San Francisco. He would, when he would come to Austin to do cancer treatments, we would hang out. Uh, and so really sad to hear that. Um, we've lost a few people. When I put out a call, James Reddy was an OpenStack community organizer uh, and Connecticut, I believe, and a, a riot by all accounts, from what I can tell, um, looking at his at his uh, social media history. And then Chris, who was an OpenStack Nova Dev, uh, who the Kilo release was dedicated to, I believe. Next slide. A couple other people we've lost along the way. Uh, one that just had a tremendous impact on the cloud in general was Jeremy Gielen. He was um, part of the, the folks that did the Cloud Expo and just a really lovely human. Uh, and of course, Kathy Cacciatore, who is probably one of my favorite people in OpenStack. We worked so many conferences together and I remember being at a Gartner conference and being really hungover. And she looked at me and she said, Nikki, go take a nap. And I was really grateful that she was willing to staff that booth, but just a, a really, really stellar human with a great sense of humor and uh, she will definitely be missed. All right, so um, my journey began early. Next slide at Rackspace. And I was a really kind of young, inexperienced, naive salesperson who really liked hanging out with engineers a lot more than I like hanging out with salespeople. And so I kind of finagled my way into doing um, OpenStack stuff and promoting Rackspace's OpenStack products. And so I believe this was at a Linux con in San Diego. Uh, next slide. I vaguely remember the Santa Clara conference. Uh, I do remember there were some epic parties there. And uh, the one I really started taking photos at was in Boston where I met uh, Akihito-san and Edgar Magana. And I remember it was during the time of, uh, of the Occupy movement and I saw that really, really free market sign and I was like, yes, open stack, open, free, free market. And I was really excited about that. 
Next slide. Then it was San Francisco and uh, I was really excited that let me do some guerrilla marketing, no pun intended. At the time, Amazon had its chaos monkey. And so I was like, man, I'm gonna dress up as a chaos monkey and I'm gonna go wreak havoc at the conference. Except when I went to the, the store to rent a costume, they didn't have monkey costumes, so I had to be a chaos ape. And so uh, I just ran around um, creating all kinds of havoc. And I, it was a pretty big secret. I think a lot of people didn't know that it was me under there. A lot of people were asking questions, but it was really fun. Uh, next slide. Then it was, uh, we did some Rackspace releases with uh, uh, just a really great group of people. And as always, good food and good shirts. There's Ann Gentle there. Then we went to the San Diego Summit, which was absolutely lovely. Such a good time, epic parties. And those days we're just talking about trying to build a community and trying to convince people to like make a commitment to OpenStack and get involved with the community. There were a lot of people that were coming from other places. Uh, next slide. Uh, this was really exciting. At the time, OpenStack was kind of competing with CloudStack and Eucalyptus. And so I looked at job data and I, I found out that, that OpenStack was just kick and tail. And so I, was, I shared a bunch of data um, and, and again, try to recruit more people to OpenStack, at trying to convince them that it was the way to go because there were actually people hiring for OpenStack roles and not so much for Eucalyptus and CloudStack. Next slide. Hong Kong Summit was great. Uh, what a, an amazing conference that was. I believe that's the one where, uh, where Mark uh, from Ubuntu had like the cart and he like pulled the, the sheet off of it, which is really, um, it was like this magical epic moment. I remember sitting around in the hotel, uh, having a good time in, in Hong Kong and then the epic parties that HP and threw and the, the cool dress up costumes, just super, super fun. Next slide. Uh, yeah, 2014 was fun. I started that, the OpenStack podcast where I got to talk to many of you. I think we did like 56 podcasts. Uh, and if you'll notice there, there were some that were explicit, uh, which is really exciting. So props to uh, Flavio from Red Hat and uh, Weston and uh, Josie from TapJoy. Uh, it was really fun and interesting to learn that we had to put explicit on these things or else some filters would actually um, delete them. <laughs> Learning experience. Then there was OpenStack Paris. Uh, that sandwich down there is a chicken testicle sandwich. I'd never had a ch chicken testicle sandwich, but I was down to try it and it's actually really good. Uh, top right, I was in a, a little gift shop and I laughed when I saw like Texas toys. I'm like, this is what they think of Texas. It's like the wild west with tumbleweeds. Uh, and so that was a, a really fun experience to browse around Paris and visit the Louvre with Jim Curry and. Um, visit the Cathedral de Notre Dame, of course, before it caught on fire. Just a really, really epic time. Next slide. We did this, uh, these fun giveaways, these people of OpenStack cards. I, they're everywhere around my house still. I still have some wrapped ones. If somebody really, really wants one, I can send you one. But this was a super, super fun giveaway. And it was really fun to get the community involved. And I'm not going to say that people were cheating and we were logging IP addresses to see if people were cheating <clears throat> Mirantis. Uh, but we were able to filter those out and actually Gary's not in his head. Uh, we were actually able to fil out, filter out uh, and they, they must have written a script to vote or something because it was like the same IP address voting from Rampus people. So we busted them. They still made the deck, but uh, that was a good time putting that deck together. There was I've also- got, I've got a copy of it here that I keep just uh, as a reminder. So yeah, Nathaniel Burton from the NSA made the deck and we had to negotiate with the NSA. I got a call from the NSA and I'm like, oh crap, why is the NSA calling me? And they were like, well, what is is this is an award is he being paid and we had a plan that if he wasn't going to make it that we were just going to black out his face and put the nsa logo and put redacted on it like this presentation that he did where they had to redact all the nsa data good times next slide then uh we uh we <laughs> having gone to metacloud we, we got acquired by cisco which was an absolute adventure i um uh, it was it was a weird experience being acquired, uh, going from like a, a startup, going to a, a big company. Uh, but I did my time there and I learned a lot and we still had fun, Gary and Ann and then all the people who ventured over there with us, the diversity programs were great. Uh, I'm no longer at Cisco. I've been on a sabbatical detoxing for the last uh, year, actually. <laughs> Next slide. Nikki, Nikki if, it, if it helps, it's still weird. 
Good to know. Glad, it, it glad I'm not there anymore. I got, I got news for you. <laughs> Vancouver. This was a really fun conference. That hotel behind Tim Bell, there was a point in the conference where there were people, um, it was in a rotating bar and there were people having sex in that building with the windows open. And I remember everyone kind of gathered over there to look at that. But that was my experience to Poutine. Uh, Vancouver was a riot. That Women of Open Stack Cruise was amazing that went around the bay at, on just the most beautiful epic day. So good job putting that one together, team. Next one. Fifth anniversary party in Austin. All I remember, it was really freaking hot that day, but we had a good time. You can tell Boris had a really good time there in the front. <laughs> Next slide. And my favorite summit of all, Tokyo, Akihito-san took us out to this little place that had the most amazing sushi I've ever had in my life. Um, there's Chris there sporting a taco flavored Doritos. Uh, we just had a really amazing time really diverse and just a, a probably the most memorable thing i love tokyo so much i've actually been back since just an, an amazing city with amazing people and amazing culture uh next slide i think that's almost it oh yeah some more uh, open stack awesome summit there's termy there with this shirt i created open stack and all i got was this lousy t-shirt that was really fun again in the heat with ann and uh, gary probably a little bit red from drinking margaritas at hula hut Next slide. And snow in Austin. Nikki, yes. who can forget that? Oh, man. So much fun. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, that's it. I, I, you know, I really just wanted to say thank you. OpenStack changed my life in a very, very profound way. Um, you can go to the next slide. I'm tired of looking at my face. Um, the food, the amazing experiences, my big takeaway is that even though we are divided by boundaries and borders and, you know, political parties and all these other things, you know, when a community comes together like this, a global, a global community, and, and you get to meet people from all over the world and experience their cultures, you realize we're really not that different. And we're all one human race, you know, just trying to make the world a better place. And for that, I am infinitely grateful. Thank you so much to the OpenStack crew for just putting on all of these conferences and working your tail off to get these things together. Mark and Jonathan and um, Allison and Sunny and Heidi and Theory and all everybody. Thank you so much for the amazing experiences. That's it. Thank you, Nikki. Thanks for uh, for sharing all of those awesome photos through the uh, through the years. And yeah, I I think that you know you. Your closing point is is so true that that uh, we we we've been able to build something with this global community that, in some ways, you know, reminds me that that as humans, even though we're different, we can still work together and accomplish big things. And I think that's that's a sometimes a needed reminder. Um, and speaking of that, you know, our our first presenters were all um, based in North America. But uh, as we have mentioned a few times, um, you know, within the, the first couple of years, OpenStack quickly started to, to spread around the world. And so um, our, our next presenters are, are from, uh, from um, a variety of regions. And we're going to get to hear some, uh, some stories from, uh, from the amazing global community uh, and, and how, uh, how different individuals have gotten involved in different parts of the world. So next up, we'll have Mohammed Abu Aisha. Uh, hey, everybody. And um, I'm, I'm very grateful to give me this opportunity to share my experience with OpenStack. Uh, I'm Mohammed Abu Aisha. I live in Middle East in Palestine. Uh, next slide. And uh, this is me. Uh, so I'm a senior software engineer. Uh, I'm a founder of OpenStack Palestine User Group. Uh, I established the, the community in Palestine last year. Uh, my engagement with uh, OpenStack was uh, uh, about three, three years ago when I started working on a project, uh, an orchestration product called Cloudify, built an OpenStack plugin integrated with OpenStack infrastructure. Uh, so basically, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit new to the OpenStack uh, infrastructure. It's about three years, not compared with everybody here. So hopefully, I'm not. Uh, the smallest person here that have the less experience with OpenStack. Uh, next slide. Um, 
Uh, last year, I have the opportunity to attend the, Open, uh, the OpenStack Infrastructure Summit uh, at Denver. And this is why it was my first engagement with uh, uh, one of the summit for uh, Open, uh, Open Stack Infrastructure, which is held uh, last year. And the uh, next step. So after I get back from the uh, from Denver summit, I decided to start uh, building our community in Palestine. So I prepared uh, our first OpenStack meetup, so which uh, to spread the the community about the OpenStack, what is OpenStack, and how they use it. And uh, luckily, I found that some of the colleagues that who attend the, uh, that meetups uh, have have really engaged with OpenStack by working with the telecom company like Nokia. So it was a very great uh, uh, meetup that uh, organized at that moment. Uh, next slide. And then we decided that we should go, uh, we should spread the OpenStack for uh, at university. So we prepared for our next uh, meetup at one of the largest university in Palestine, uh, which attends about 100, uh, uh, 100 students. And I want to have the chance to uh, thank uh, Memset and Dexhost who uh, provide us with uh, a free user account to uh, to show the to the audience how to use OpenStack uh, on the uh, public cloud. So this is, was uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, good moments that we shared the OpenStack with our community. And we still decide to uh, organize more meetup uh, for uh, OpenStack in the, in the next uh, coming months. Next, I think I'm done. Yeah. So this is my experience and um, with OpenStack, and I'm, I'm very grateful to have be a member of this great community, and I'm looking forward to start uh, uh, contributing to one of the OpenStack uh, projects because uh, I have time right now because I just finished my master and I'm uh, uh, preparing to start uh, contributing to one of the OpenStack projects. And thank you for everybody. Thank you, Mohammed. It's uh, it's great to hear how there's a still uh you know new new meetups in, in new places and thank you for taking on that effort to to expand our community that's how it happens so yeah, really thank you that. yeah and next up we have Ganshyam man g man as you might know him on uh irc who's a, a ptl and tc member and um a very uh very well-known contributor so uh take it away yeah thanks Mohan. Hello everyone, my name is Anshya Man, and I started OpenStack and been engaged in OpenStack in India. And then I did almost six years contribution from Tokyo and now I'm in Canada and making myself believe that human lives in minus 40 degrees Celsius. <laughs> but that's good experience. So my journey uh, was in 2012. I I was engaged as a support engineer, like mostly downstream work with OpenStack. And uh, on 23rd of, 22nd or 21st of Feb, I was like about to move to the other area and where I could not get opportunity to work in OpenStack. But uh, be just before my last day in this uh, OpenStack support engineer team, I got opportunity that, okay, we have the upstream contributor, contributor we can see. So if you would like to do it. And uh, being an open source, knowing an open source culture and all, that was uh, interesting for me. And uh, on 23rd Feb, I flew to Tokyo. And from Tokyo, I joined the OpenStack upstream team. And that was around six years back. This was my first batch, 6.5 years back. And on the right side, first photo is my first summit on Atlanta, 2014. March or somewhere. So that was awesome. Like uh, I never been like worked in open source in a big uh, events like this. And when I attended the Atlanta event, it was not just like uh, a conference or marketing event, but people like uh, technical discussion, the design summits or like people meeting in corridor or in the cafe, they discuss like all these technical depths and all. Those kind of things were really interesting for me. And after that, yeah, it started and uh, coding is my main interest. APIs and uh, QA things uh, where I'm contributing mostly. And 
uh, in either area also and as a technical committee member and there were a lot of events then keep going and i collected all these badges for every event that's my like one of the okay or good good memory like having look into this okay 2014 that event i went 2015 that event i went i think that was really nice journey and next next slide please yeah and this is uh, something i really uh, like to share about the you can say the best thing in openstack uh, being like working from india and tokyo especially like uh, uh, the asia company uh, obviously every company has their it policies their restriction proxies but uh, in asia side we have little more so openness of community tooling uh, is the I think one of the important thing we are maintaining because if a developer or any contributor can access the tools freely or they are not like uh, restricted on these kind of stuff like okay we cannot have access to these things in my company and all this stuff so tooling is very important and in openstack i think uh, every tooling whatever we are using even in communication or development or, or a lot of our open dev tools are very freely to be used everywhere and that is one of the good thing and obviously the culture openness uh, being like I, I have my team in uh, india and tokyo like we work in three four uh, open source communities and openstack is being i feel the most uh, open and transparent uh, com community and obviously every community member irrespective of uh, what country culture company they are but uh, whenever it comes to the community side they are very open and they are like okay first team is our upstream contributor teams and then we have the second our company team so that is really awesome the picture is uh, the noa ptz denver or somewhere really like working in uh, noa and team is really awesome 2030 update that was one of the survey question and the most thing i like openstack being in top three most active open source project i think if we i would like to see that update after even 10 years in 2030 or more i think if we can maintain that uh, i think that will be the awesome thing especially for as a developer that's what i want <laughs> yeah next slide please yeah these are few memories uh, the left side when care events is events are my favorite uh, the one of the reason is my first session in any of the global uh, conference was in venker 2015 on noa v2.1 apis and i thought like it will be 10 15 or maximum 50 people there but it was around uh, more than 200 and i was like how should i speak it <laughs> so that was awesome experience and uh, that's where i started like my journey as a uh, being upstream developer speaking in global events meeting with other people and all this stuff and obviously next event also was awesome i was hoping like we we could have been in venture this zone but yeah it was virtual and upstream trainings is also one of the key thing like i have still this cap and this was the awesome gift you can say but yeah my my thing my my main belief is like we have to teach what we learn and i have learned and got a help from a lot of community members and that's where i usually help in the upstream training being as a mentor or or helping new contributors onboarding them and openstack days this is this picture on right side is of tokyo openstack days and i've been in vietnam openstack days tokyo and those attending local events is always great you get more uh, connected with the local people local contributors and that that has uh, obviously the impact on how we work together and obviously beer with community member that is awesome like we work together for three months six months without seeing each other and when we meet and have beer that's awesome mid cycle meetup was one of my favorite we uh, we had like now ptz kind of things but uh, those were like uh, meeting uh, a small team and discussing the design things and all were awesome 
and yeah that's uh, one of the good is like i grew my beer for 2.5 years barcelona summit i started then were around in where i saved it but that was around 2.5 years along with open stack i wish i could have continued that <laughs> but yeah that was good so overall a lot of good memories and uh, i think best thing uh, is like we are still continuing in top 3 active Uh, open source contribution and uh, the big role here plays like foundation uh, how they are providing us the platform transparency openness everything i mean that's a really a big thanks to all our foundation staff contributors everyone and yeah i am really thankful to be presenting here and i'll be happy to contribute more and more as much as i can yeah yeah that's all from my side Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for uh, for sharing all of that too. We have one more uh, presenter um, that's going to to share some slides. And uh, Song Su Cho is one of the uh, the has been one of the main organizers of our community in Korea. So I'll hand it over to you, Song Su. Okay. Thank you. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear okay, you very yes. well. Okay. Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Song Su. Um, I'm the uh, leader of OpenStack Korea User Group, and this is my OpenStack story. So the first time I met OpenStack was just my curiosity about the cloud. And in 2015, I was a student and studying OpenStack alone. And one day I found that there was an OpenStack User Group in my country, and I attended the fifth birthday party. That was my first time to attend the the local community event actually i didn't know about openstack very well so i was afraid to attend the local event but the community members warmly welcomed me and now i'm really thank you to them next okay so um my first experiment with the community was very impressive so i keep going to the community uh, such as study group for the seminar um, it it was good to get to know about openstack through the community but it was more fun to meet the community member and talk to them so from 2016 i participated in local openstack days conference as a volunteer um from then contribution to community has made me feel more delighted than i have learned about openstack through the community so as a result in 2017 i became the vice leader of the openstack korea user group and now i am the leader of the openstack korea user group next um This is my most favorite memory in OpenStack community. Um, last year was a very meaningful year for Korea and Vietnam user group. So OpenStack Korea user group sponsored Open Infra Days Vietnam as a community sponsor. So the Korea user group, Korea user group organizers went to the Vietnam and cheered for the event. After the event, was user group continued to collaborate. such as a joint seminar and study group. So I really thank you to Ian and Nguyen for creating an opportunity for the two user groups to collaborate. I think the Ian is in here, so I really thank you for him. Thank you, Samsu. <laughs> thank you, Ian. So this, is, this event once again made me feel that the OpenStack community has no boundaries as a global community. So the Korea user group organizers are welcome to collaborate with other user groups. Next slide. Um, this is my favorite presentation. Actually, I came for the OpenStack. I, I just want to know the what is OpenStack, but now I stay for the community. I'm working with OpenStack in my company, and after the work, I'm living with OpenStack, com uh, OpenStack community. Um, 
open space became everything in my life. So I really love this community and thank you for contributing to this community. Thank you. Thank you, Sung Soo. So, uh, you know, that, that was a, an awesome set of memories and experiences that, that we were able to hear from people who've been involved at points all along OpenStack. Um, Mark and I threw together just a, a handful of photos here <laughs> that capture our, some of our memories. Um, there are a couple, there's one of Tom Feifeld sleeping in a conference <laughs> somewhere, one of me sleeping. We have an entire album internally called Sleeping in Public, which is basically when, when stackers fall asleep from traveling too much. Do you have any, uh, any final memories you would like to share, Mark, before we, uh, we toast it out? Well, just one quick thing. You know, Everybody talked about how uh, it's been very welcoming and it's been so good to see people from different walks of life and different points of view. And, and one of the things that just came to mind is that as an example of how welcoming we are of different ideas is that in the Portland summit in 2013, we had a keynote from Nate from the NSA. And then in 2017, we had a keynote from an ex NSA speaker. <laughs> you might remember Edward Snowden. So to me, that's uh, just uh, two fun memories that of, of interesting points of view from NSA and ex NSA uh, members. So I don't know. I, I, I loved both of those uh, experiences and all the summits and getting to meet everybody. So I, I, I think that's a just a good sign of, of how we're always welcoming different perspectives. So cool. Well, Sunny, if you can kill the slide share, I know that, that uh, Allison was uh, was interested in getting kind of a, a grid view of as many oh yeah as many stackers as we could to this take your a selfie virtual, shot yeah a virtual group photo here um, so while you all while you all uh, get your get your selfie face on here I just want to uh, I'll raise my topo chico and I just want to um, kind of reiterate what Mark said at the beginning which is you know if you've had any involvement in OpenStack at all in the last ten years. I hope that you feel really proud of what we've been able to accomplish as a community. Um, uh, Sung Su said it really well, you know, come for OpenStack, stay for the community. That community has been built by everybody who's here as well as the thousands of others all around the world who aren't here. And to me, that's the most incredible kind of outcome from this whole thing that kicked off 10 years ago. Um, so I wanna say cheers to, uh, to OpenStack for the past 10 years and here's to the next 10. Cheers to open stack to all. Cheers. Cheers. Shreed's here. Hey, yes, I am here. I'm Gary. Same t-shirt. <laughs> Hong Kong. I have my uh, my open stack for Japan t-shirt that we did. Uh, oh, nice. In 2011. Yeah, so many oh, great t-shirts. I, I was looking from a San Diego. But I couldn't find. I'm sorry. I have my socks. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Full outfit. I see John Dickinson. Hi, John. Good morning. Hi, I have one from Portland, Prakash here. Hi, Prakash. Yeah, Portland. <laughs> that was my remembrance. Ah, uh, yes. Portland, Mark, we had the sweatshirts too, right? That's right. Yeah. Well, thank you everyone for uh, for joining, and thank you especially to uh, to the crew that that was willing to uh, to um, you know share their their memories and their presentations. And uh, you know, if any of you have have other memories that you'd like to share, we're going to continue to to publish anything that uh, that people want to uh, want to highlight best memories, contributions, summits, parties, whatever it might be, um, let us know. You can contact Sunny or Allison and we're gonna continue to, to keep the, uh, the celebration going. Uh, you know, wish we could have done it in person at, at our events throughout this year, but this is, uh, um, you know, I think this has still been awesome and I've really enjoyed it. It's been really special to hear from everyone. And by the way, our next summit is in October. It is going to be a virtual uh, summit.
moment. So you should all Thank be able you. to attend because I see that you're all, you have the internet. So you are all <laughs> capable of attending. So it's going to be a virtual summit in October. So look for, look for information on that. And we want everybody there and uh, maybe we can raise a glass. Prospectus is available when? <laughs> oh, that, that just sense. Gary right on cue. <laughs> 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 Kendall's working on it like right now. Yes. You'll, you'll get it soon, Gary. You'll be the first one. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we'll see you soon. Take care, guys. Thank you all. You. Happy birthday. Bye. Happy birthday. Bye. Thank Bye. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye-bye.